Today we're going inside the dark web, not to teach you how to get there, but to explain the five main types of services that exist, why people use them, and the real risks involved. This video is purely educational. This video is for educational purposes only. I will not provide instructions, URLs, or tools for accessing the dark web. Discussing the dark web's structure, history, and risks helps creators, students, and the public understand online safety and legal consequences. If you're watching for research, consult qualified experts and follow the law. Terminology first. The surface web is what search engines index. The deep web contains private pages, like online banking, not indexed by search engines. The dark web is a small portion of the deep web accessed by anonymity-focused software. It can hide both benevolent and illegal activity. The dark web matters because anonymity changes incentives. It's been used by whistleblowers, activists, and researchers, but also by cybercriminals for fraud, drug trafficking, and stolen data. Law enforcement monitors and investigates dark web marketplaces and forums because they can have serious offline consequences. First, darknet marketplaces digital bazaars where goods and services are offered anonymously. Historically, the best-known example was Silk Road, a marketplace that shaped how people think about online anonymous trade. That project and its takedown illustrate both technical innovation and legal consequences. Marketplaces often used crypto payments and escrow systems, historically. But that's background context, not how-to. Many marketplaces are scams, honeypots, or frequented by bad actors. Users risk theft, arrest, and exposure. Second, forums and chat spaces. Some are technical discussion boards, others are criminal forums where stolen data or services are bought and sold. These communities may exchange operational tips, which is exactly why discussing them publicly is sensitive. Sharing tactics can enable harm. Third, privacy tools used for good. Journalists and activists sometimes use hidden service drop boxes to receive tips or documents safely from sources in dangerous environments. That's one of the dark web's legitimate, socially valuable uses, but its safety depends on operational security and legal context. Fourth, data dumps and credential lists. Cybercriminals often post leaked credentials or personally identifiable data for sale or free download. That's a public safety issue. Leaked passwords and IDs lead to fraud, identity theft, or targeted attacks. If you're researching this topic, handle any leaked data ethically and never reuse compromised credentials. Important. Even browsing, interacting, or downloading from parts of the dark web can expose you to illegal content, scams, malware, and serious legal risk. Investigations into major darknet marketplaces resulted in criminal charges and long prison terms for operators and some participants. If your interest is academic or journalistic, work with legal counsel and institutional review. Technical risks include drive-by malware, de-anonymization mistakes, and targeted scams. Law enforcement and security researchers both warn that anonymity is never guaranteed. Mistakes happen and metadata can expose users. If you're a student, journalist, or researcher, don't wing it. Use institutional resources, get ethics approvals, and coordinate with security teams. Many universities, newsrooms, and law enforcement units have safe processes for studying these spaces without encouraging illegal activity. For hands-on learning without legal exposure, study academic papers, read investigative journalism, for example, Wired, BBC, and rely on industry reports from cybersecurity firms and government research summaries. Recap, we covered five categories, marketplaces, forums, whistleblower drop boxes, data dumps, and specialized services plus the major risks and responsible ways to research. The dark web is technically fascinating but legally and ethically fraught. If you found this useful, like and subscribe for more deep dives into cyber topics. Drop questions below, but please don't ask for how to access the dark web. I can't provide that. For anything sensitive, consult legal counsel or a qualified researcher.